Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about web hosting for small business and what you need to be looking for as a small business owner in a web hosting provider and which ones I recommend. Now, nobody is sponsoring the channel today, so if that's something you're worried about, this is not a plug for any one particular company over the other. This is all based on my experience as a graphic designer and web designer, someone who's hosted and continues to host multiple websites, has built multiple websites for various customers. This is my honest opinion and advice based on what I look for when I recommend things to my clients and what I've done personally. So that's where this information is coming from. So one of the most important things I would say when you're picking a web hosting company is to really look at a few key things. You wanna look at what their prices are year to year for your domain name. Your domain name is gonna be your .com, your .net, your .org, whatever the URL and address is for your website. So you wanna look at not only what the upfront cost is because a lot of them have deals where it's 99 cents for the first year and so on and so forth, but the renewal fees, the renewal fees on that can be extraordinarily higher than what your initial fee was. So you really need to pay attention to what that yearly renewal fee is for your domain. Now, there are a few that actually offer a free domain renewal for the lifetime of your account for that first domain name or that first two or three domain names in your package. So I would also take a look at that. Now, let's talk a little bit about the web hosting packages themselves. When you're just getting started out as a small business, particularly if you're not taking online payments or if you're only using PayPal for online payments, then it's fine to get shared web hosting. I know a lot of people have probably talked you out of that and they're probably web hosting companies, right? They're probably web hosting companies who are convincing you that you need a VPS or a cloud server or a dedicated server right out the gate. Look, my primary website, robertoblake.com, which also houses my blog, gets, what was it, 40,000 views. And that's just one of several websites that I'm hosting on that same shared account. It gets 40,000 views per month, 40,000 views per month. That's the kind of traffic that I'm getting. And that's on one website. I have a whole nother website that I host my podcast on and that's still fine. So even with that in place, with downloads of these 20 and 30 minute podcasts and a website, one website out of several that's getting 40,000 views per month by itself, that level of traffic, that level of bandwidth usage is fine on a shared web hosting account that I'm only paying $10 a month for. So if I can do that, then you don't have to pay an extraordinary cost of $50 or $60 a month when you're just getting started with a web hosting company for your small business because you're probably not getting that traffic right away. The only way I would see you getting that traffic right away is if you're doing a lot of online advertising with Google AdSense. And even then, I would imagine that you're not getting traffic that's gonna really slow down the experience uh, tremendously. So I would just keep that in mind. Now, if you are getting something in the neighborhood of a quarter of a million views per month, then I would say you might need something more robust like a VPS server. Or if you're hosting online media, you might need a web hosting server that is a little more robust and a little more powerful, like a VPS server for $25 or $30 per month. That might be appropriate in that situation. I don't necessarily think it's time for you to get a dedicated server unless you need a dedicated IP address for something very specific and technical that you're doing, in which case your web developer will let you know, or unless you're getting something like a half a million to a million views per month or you're hosting a lot of media, then I would say a dedicated server will make sense for you on the you know, 50, 60, $100 a month price range. But I would also imagine that you have a business that is demanding that level of uh, power and that is making the money to justify that. So that's where I would say it's important to consider that investment as well. The other part of that is to make sure you understand exactly what you're getting in your package. And if you don't, talk to somebody or ask me questions about it, either in the comment section or reach out to me on Twitter and ask me questions about what these packages are or what your technical issue is with a web hosting company. And I will talk to you about that. The other thing to consider here is email. How many email accounts do you get? How much storage does each email account get? For most people, two gigs is a lot of email storage, but if you plan to keep all of your email, 
then it might not be enough. Or if you're the kind of person like me that is sending and receiving large files that have you know PDFs or have Photoshop files in them, then that could be problematic. So you really need to look at that and I would recommend that instead of worrying about large files for email that you utilize something like Dropbox. And I will have a link in the description below, but Dropbox is a cloud-based uh, web storage that you can use to transfer large files and to store and house them. So I would utilize that instead of taking advantage of your email because I think that one, having the ability to save it in the cloud and then two, uh, the ability to see how many times it was downloaded and different things like that, I think it's gonna be important and I think it's better to have it there than to suck up your inbox. So keep that in mind. So a lot of web hosting companies try to market themselves on reliability and uptime. And really at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to customer reviews. I would say don't go with a smaller company because they're not gonna necessarily be able to support what you need as a small business. If there's a problem at two in the morning, there's probably like three or five people working there. You don't know that they're gonna be able to handle your issue versus the other hundreds or thousands of customers they might have. When you go with a larger, well-known, reputable company that has servers and locations worldwide or nationwide, then it's less likely one that something's gonna go wrong because they have the infrastructure to deal with it. And then two, if it does, that they'll have people on staff 24 seven in a decent amount to be able to address your specific issue in a timely manner. So that would be my recommendation and that's based on my experience as well. Uh, and I would say that one of the other things you look at is don't buy into gimmicks, don't buy into these things when they say uptime because that's very technical and there's a lot of jargon in there where you know potentially they can say one thing but they don't have to qualify it. So I would just ignore all of that stuff and take a hard look at what reviews are saying and what someone you know who is hosting with a particular company has to say about them. Take recommendations for people you know or that people that you trust or that people who are actually using the service. For example, a lot of you have taken my advice on buying certain camera equipment and certain computer equipment because you know that I'm using it, you've seen my review of it, and you know that I use it in my everyday work. So that's a reason to use it. I buy stuff because my friends buy it or recommend it or someone I respect bought it or recommend it. So there's, there's something to that. So with that in mind, there are three web hosting companies that I recommend. They're not the only ones that you could use, but they're three that I trust implicitly and are familiar with, and that my clients have used and that my friends have used. And the ones that I recommend are one in one who is my current web host right now. I've been using them for years. I think I've been with them for like eight years now. And the, for the most part, they've never let me down. I've had two issues with them in eight years and they were all resolved within hours. The other one that I'm gonna recommend is Bluehost. My friend David DeFranco hosts with them. Uh, someone that I really respect, Amy Schmittauer of Savvy Sexy Social, she hosts with them and advocates for them as well. And I actually am using them for a super secret project that I will reveal at a later date, but there's something cool I'm doing over there. And a lot of my clients use them and I've developed stuff on the platform for them. So that's very cool. By the way, David has built a resource. So if you're going to use Bluehost, he has a website that's a resource for any issues you might have, questions and FAQs. So I'm gonna link that in the description below, not just to plug him and help him out, but because it'll help a lot of you out if you have questions. As for one and one, if you have questions, leave those in the comment section or ask me on Twitter and I'll answer as many of those as I can, but they have a robust FAQ section that should be able to cover everything you need. The last solution that I'm gonna recommend is Squarespace. For those of you who aren't technical or don't have a web designer or a programmer to deal with stuff for you, Squarespace is gonna be tremendous for you because it's gonna allow you to basically put together a website in a day or a week on your own without any technical skill or ability or design savvy and it's gonna be okay. You can replace your own logos, your own photos and it'll be just fine. You can get something up and running. People who are huge use this stuff. It's not just for beginners and just not for small businesses. Jared Polin of Frono's Photo, uh, someone who's a YouTuber who has over 400,000 subscribers, is a world famous photographer. He uses them and takes advantage of the service and how easy it is to update his site and his photography. So I would recommend that to anybody who's just getting started for the first time. If they can't hire a web designer or are not a technical person themselves, I would say Squarespace is a great solution for you. That's what I would recommend. I would recommend one in one Bluehost or Squarespace as a web solution for a small business. Remember, when choosing a web host, you want to get something that people you know have used and can recommend and that they trust. You want to focus on what comes in your package. You want to make sure you're paying attention to the yearly and monthly fees and that you know what you're paying for. Again, if you still have questions, I'll try and answer as many of them as I can in the comment section below. Anyway, like this video if you like it. 
Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget, create something awesome today.